All right, so if you're one of those guys that uh, would like to do your own, paint your own car in your garage at home, I'm gonna kind of give you some ideas and things. You know, first of all, I wanna tell you, you wanna look over your rules and regulations for where you live and make sure that it's, if it's legal or not, that's gonna be up to you and make sure you follow the rules. So I'm gonna tell you that first, but you do whatever you wanna do. But if you're one of those guys who's a little bit of a rebel, whatever, or maybe it's legal where you are, that's fine. Let's talk about how you can maybe do your own car because if you found out lately, the price of painting is really expensive. So maybe this will kind of help you find out the things you might need to do a good job. Okay, one of the things I always use is uh, I have an air pressure regulator and an additional uh, desiccant <laughs> filter. I always forget how to say it. Desiccant filter. Um, and this one, of course, you can see they're pink. You take those out and you put them in your oven and make sure that they're blue again. When they're blue, they're good. And then they hold the water. Even when they get pink, they still do a pretty good job of keeping the water out of your line. So that's one key thing. If you're going to do it in your garage at home, make sure you know. I don't care how much plastic you put up over all your stuff, you can cover everything, you will get overspray on everything inside your garage just so if you eliminate the idea of thinking that that's just going to be able to be controlled. It just it goes underneath the plastic, it just goes everywhere. So years ago I was, did stuff like that and uh, I'm not going to say I've done it anytime recently but many years ago I did. Uh, so I have a water trap. This is one water trap. I have one at my compressor. Um, I also have one here and you notice that this is going uphill. Uh, that helps keep the water down into here. And I'll take the water out of that. This is another desiccant filter um, right here and it has pellets in it. So I'll shut off my air, remove this, clean, take the pellets out and I'll put uh, fresh ones in you can buy a set of them if you want this stuff here They come blue they turn pink you can just take those same ones put it in the oven And run it for a little while. I don't know what the temperature is. There's a video out on that if you want to look that up um, But you can take the desiccants out the little pellets out of there and you can Put them in the oven for a while and they'll turn blue again So that's all you need to do with them and but you lose a few of them over time. So remember that so keeping water out of the air is a really important thing that helps keep your fish eyes down also uh, helps keep from those big giant water splatters that come out of the gun uh, randomly nothing you want is a pretty nice good hose you know you want to have one that you use just for your spraying uh, they have this stuff on Amazon you can go on my Amazon link and I'm Amazon affiliate they'll give me some pennies um, but this hose right here is less than 30 bucks, I think. And it's a lot better than the Harbor Freight stuff. This is the Goodyear hose. It's very cheap. It's very good. And this stuff works really good. I mean, if you really want to go elaborate, some guys go to get a little whip hose where you have a really lightweight hose. Because when you're lifting this up, it's kind of heavy. So that's the issue with this rubber hose. But I always use rubber hose. That's because I'm old school. That's why I've done stuff for years. You know, one of the key things is to make sure that your neighbors are happy. So if you're gonna do something like that, um, like if you're gonna do a whole pickup truck like this at home, probably do it in sections. I would not try to do the whole thing. You're gonna end up with a lot of overspray. Maybe just do a front hood section, maybe the whole front end, the middle of the section, maybe do it in three sections or something like that. Um, Section it up, it'll it'll really make your life a lot easier, especially if it's your first time spraying. You know, it's a lot easier to paint a, a smaller section than paint the whole thing. And, uh, you know, do it at opportune times, something like that. Make sure everybody's, your neighborhood's out of town or whatever. If I can tell you anything that will help you, the most important thing is make sure your neighbors are happy. Don't turn your spray up all the way 
and just start blowing paint and figure it's okay. Uh, you know, you're going to get overspray can go on your neighbor's cars, stuff like that. So, if you're really, especially if you're really close together, um, if you're friends with your neighbors, you might want to just tell them, hey, dude, can you just park up the street? You know, I just, I'm going to paint my car tomorrow. And they'll be like, oh, all right, you know, cool. Um, if you're not friends with your neighbors, <laughs> make sure your garage door's shut or something. I mean, really, you know, be careful because they can make your day very, very, very bad. So, like I said, depends on where you live. You could be anywhere in the world watching this. So, that's completely up to you. All right. Here's some spray guns. Yeah, they're all dirty. And yeah, they all work just fine. Uh, I know I'll get tons of people that will tell me how I need to keep my spray guns clean. Uh, I don't have a facility to where I can put them in a solvent tank and clean them all the time and keep them super clean. So they get dirty on the outside and they get cleaned on the inside where it matters. So you want to make that comment, go for it. Here's a couple of things you need to know about spray guns. There's anything from the $10 or $15, I don't know, depends on inflation, Harbor Freight gun, and some of the others. Um, this gun is a cheap gun. Will it work to paint your car? Sure, it'll work to paint your car. You can probably do a pretty decent looking job once or twice, and then it's gonna get some junk in it, and it's gonna, it's really hard to clean, and you're going to get frustrated with it and you'll end up not using it again pretty much is what i use this thing for is to spray junk that i don't want to spray uh, with any of my other guns so i have it around just for that um then there's these things here this is an lv lp spray gun okay low volume low pressure there's some good and some bad to these uh one of the good things about it is it doesn't uh make a lot of overspray so if you're really conscious about that it might be a benefit to go with but I would not um, after using this gun for a while I mean it works fine I use it I don't use it recently uh, because there's other guns that I have that are better and I think they this is an LV LP low volume low pressure basically it uses less air um, but I'll tell you what, that this gun right here from Harbor Freight, these HTE um, Spectrum is what this is. I you know it's so dirty you can't tell. But it's called uh, HTE Spectrum. It actually sprays better and uses very low air. So it kind of is a good gun for you guys that are DIY at home trying to spray something. Because a lot of people don't have a... 17 cfm compressor when you're spraying your own car at home so if you're doing that with a smaller compressor you might find that this gun will be adequate for what you're trying to do and i can say it's the best gun and i'm not saying that i'm the best painter out there some people try and look at my work and they go oh hey i see some orange peel in that and i see all this look i'm not the gun man i don't spray all day long every day of the week when I when I was doing that every day, yeah, you know what? I was pretty freaking good. I could spray stuff all day long and make it look perfect. But when you're not doing that every day and you paint one or two cars a year, you're not going to have the same results. So that's one of the reasons people, they want to make that comment, go for it too. It's fine with me. I already know. So anyway, if you use this gun here, you can get pretty darn good results it's a little cheaper than the black widow gun i honestly don't i haven't used the black widow but i've watched guys spray with it and i really don't see much difference in the atomization and with the uh fan size uh, maybe there is a little bit larger fan size on the on the black widow but i'm not sure i don't know this one has a plenty good size fan it'll spray anything pretty well Another gun they have at Harbor Freight looks like this one. I don't know if this is one of those. I can't remember where I bought this. But it has this little design on it. These are actually pretty good too as far as the spray quality goes. But again, when you run into a cheaper gun, what you're going to run into is you always have this little 
this tapered end here and then that fits in a tapered fitting in there and it just doesn't seal very well and it starts to wear out and it's just not a very good design so one of those little $69 guns or whatever these or the ones you can buy on Amazon probably not a good idea to buy one I'll show you what to look for if you want a decent gun you want one that has like a head that if you look in here see how there's all those holes around there and it doesn't have a fit that it fits into uh, these are easier to keep clean and I need to clean this one uh, I just got done using it on a job and I use this stuff in the field so it doesn't get cleaned as often as stuff that you know when I'm doing stuff at home or if I'm in a spray booth doing it you have different results now Here's a expensive gun, and these are a lot better. So uh, is it worth it to get an expensive gun? Uh, you know, it just depends on what you're trying to paint. So like if you're trying to paint a vertical flat panel, you're probably going to get a lot of orange peel with one of the other guns here. Okay, so that's when it's a really good idea. So like when I'm painting a VW bus, for instance, it's vertical and flat, using this gun is really important. Now I can probably do almost as good a job or the same job with this gun. That's how good this gun is. It is pretty good for the money. It's only a, a buck fifty at Harbor Freight. Um, there's another one in Europe. I think it's called the FLG-5. I don't know. We don't have them here, so I can't tell you. Um, that, uh, but I've watched guys spray with that, and it's really almost the same as this gun is. The problem with one of these better guns is they use a lot more air. So if you're at home and you're trying to do your own paint job, like I said, if you've got a small compressor, you've got a 5 horsepower, 60 gallon, you can use one of these but you also get a bigger cloud going. So if your neighbors are close by, again, those are things to think about that you may not want to use one of these guns at home. I've got other videos out saying about using this gun to get no orange peel. That is on a vertical surface that is flat. If you're doing a vertical surface that is flat, you need a good gun to break it up finer. The better guns will break up the material finer and they will and then that will give you a, a finer atomization which is basically dots on the thing area when you have more dots per square inch then you have a finer spray and it will get less orange peel that gun has a disposable system that i use um d cups uh, so that also helps you get uh, less pot drips let's talk about that for a second I've watched a couple videos recently where I saw a guy and he was using one of these kind of guns and this gun is actually pretty good it has some decent coarse threads of course they need to be clean um, and when they're nice and clean they will actually do pretty well some people say they want a finer threads on here actually coarse threads are better because what happens is it's easier to clean them out if you have really fine stuff here so on this part right here looking for a better gun you'll notice that this one has coarser threads which are similar to the Devilbus Techno Pro Lite another thing to watch out for on your cheaper gun is those lids that are plastic that just slide in they have a metal pot and the lid just slides in um, I found every time I've had one of those, I've thrown those in the trash because they end up, the lid shrinks a little bit and they fall out. You know, you bump it when you're spraying you. As you bump something, especially this guy right here, seems like you'll be spraying, you'll be watching your spray and you hit that mirror. And I've seen hundreds of times where I've actually knocked that plastic cap off and thrown a big paint mess. So. Stay away from those. Your better cheap guns are gonna have all of these things. You're gonna have a decent coarse threads here. You're gonna have a better quality plastic here that you're able to keep clean. This one isn't that bad, believe it or not. I could clean this up 
pretty nice the uh, and have the coarse threads on air cap so you're gonna have coarse threads on here uh, and you're gonna have a, a cap that looks more like this okay where it doesn't have the taper um, so those are all the things to look for when you're buying a cheaper gun which basically all fall into this Harbor Freight and, and it's not because I am big with Harbor Freight um, it's just that they're available everywhere and a, a lot of times if you try and find something on a website somewhere you're not going to have it with the air cap off to look at those thread side thread to see if they're coarse or to see if it's the taper on taper fit um, I know kind of by looking at them that it's going to be a taper on taper fit and if it's going to be one like this it's kind of flat looking uh, the, and, and does it come with an air regulator you would like to have one that has an air regulator on it and you're going to end up buying that so uh, if it comes with all of those things on it uh, you can change this but you need to know the thread sizes they are all different so you're going to find you know trying to buy piecemeal you end up spending more so just keep that in mind so anyway if you're looking for a decent gun not a bad one for a hundred and fifty dollars um, there are other ones that are comparable it may be some of the develop starting line ones or something like that aren't too bad I don't know I just happened to buy this one because I was at Harbor Freight because it's convenient and that's why I got this gun it wasn't because of anything I looked at all the stuff that it had on it it had everything I wanted uh, at the time it was like on sale for $99 I don't think they have that anymore but that's why I ended up buying it these are the, probably the best value good spray gun too you see how that's coarse it's even more coarse than the others now if you get the cheap one now you look here uh, $10 gun I'll see if this one's even kind of come off you see how fine these threads are paint gets in there and it's hard to clean them out and it's you, the time you spend with little brushes trying to clean all that stuff that's going to be key you know for you diy guys at home you're not going to want to do that all the time just like i you know i don't want to clean my guns all the time i'm busy i do work i'm a painting contractor i do field work i do i use these guns out in the field where i can't get them clean all the time so again that's the reason why i do that i used to paint cars many years ago so I know all this stuff about painting cars and yeah I do know how to spray a car and get no orange peel when I'm practice and I've done it many times over and over yeah I can do it but when you like I said you're not doing it all the time practice drill and rehearse is what makes you good at anything one of the things you can look up if you're interested in doing your own car is if you don't want to get over spray all over the stuff in your garage which again you will definitely It'll go places you never thought it would. Um, is get one of those uh, inflatable spray booths. They're really not expensive on Amazon. I'll be getting another one supposedly pretty soon. So check the channel out for reviews. Might want to subscribe and see uh, what the next one I get is. They're going to supposed to send me one out, and I thought, well, I'll take it. For of course, you know, pretty expensive item. They're in the range of a thousand to. Fifteen hundred dollars for one to do a car. And the reason I had the mini gun here is, let's say you were gonna go and do a. Um, this is a cheaper composite mini gun, and there's ones that are much better than this. The reason I like this cheaper one is because it has a pot with a lid on it. A lot of them, the lids leak really bad. You know, they're just terrible. The cheap ones, um, and you can do small sections at a time with one of these with a very small compressor so if let's say all you have is a one horsepower compressor you want to paint your car you could maybe do a door and a fender or a few things at a time work your way around it and paint it little by little and probably get it done and do a decent job with a small gun like this uh, one of these little thirty dollar this is a I don't know what it's called you tell me Dynas Dynatus uh, I don't know whatever cheap thing uh, the thing I don't like about this one in particular is this 
knob has play in it and you're trying to adjust your air um, that's a pain in the butt um, the thing I do like about it is that it has this pot here it still also has one of these uh, setups with a decently coarse thread and the same if you look here the same type of a setup these are the better guns have that set up there so those are just things to look for if you're looking for a gun and you want to buy a cheap one stay away from the ones again that have this uh we'll look at it again so you can see right after the taper type end it fits in another taper end yeah, they work for a while they work pretty good when they're working but when they stop working they just don't work anymore and it's terrible or this one here I can have this thing dirty like this and it'll spray really nice still you know where this one here if it's just a little bit dirty it's just gonna give you problems and then you're gonna get a terrible spray job one of the things you're gonna be doing a lot when you do your work at home is you're gonna be cutting and buffing pretty pretty much everything yes you can spray in a garage I've done it many years ago and get no dirt in the paint job spray booth is not going to help you with dirt that doesn't help that's not really what a spray job a spray booth does it does two things it gives you good lighting and good airflow the dirt still can get in there the filters sometimes you know when you open the spray booth door I've done it many times so you open the spray booth door to walk in and walk out and that's usually when the dirt comes in with you so you know always make sure you open that door really slowly in the spray booth um, and or it might be on your clothing stuff like that so make sure you blow all your clothing off blow off all your paper use a tack rag clean everything really clean um, make sure that you know all the dust is down you can wet the floor those are all things to do to make sure you get no dust you will get some dust in their paint job even if you paint it in the booth sometimes you do and uh, you know what you're going to make up for your spray work because again when you're at home trying to paint your garage you're not as worried about the spray quality as you are where the overspray is going if the overspray is going to your neighbor's cars and because you've got your spray air turned up all the way and you've got you know 28 pounds of pressure and you're using the Develvis Techno Pro Light, you're going to have a lot of fine mist that's going to leave your garage and it's going to go somewhere and it's going to land on somebody's car and if it lands on somebody's car they are not going to be happy and if they complain and call somebody that's going to be very very bad so that should be your main 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 focus so you're going to give up some quality so what i usually do if i'm spraying in a place where it's inopportune is i will use lower air pressure so you use instead of you know if your gun's rated at 28 pounds i might be spraying it at 14 or 15 and then trying to get it to come out the best atomization as i can with that maybe i'll turn the spray uh, the uh, material volume down more and try and work that out to make sure that I'm getting a decent fine spray but I'm going to sacrifice some of that to get less overspray so again when you're painting a house you do different than you do in a spray booth so when you do that because you're not going to have the finest an atomization you're going to have to make up for it with cut and buff so you're going to have to color sand everything and buff it and try and make up for that in your finish you can still get a really nice paint job at home with you know even the 10 or 15 dollar harbor freight gun and just doing a lot more work on the buffing end so again when you guys uh maybe you've gotten estimates from shops and you go hey man these guys all want 10 grand or more to paint my car well i'm gonna tell you anything less than that there's some shops that'll do it for less than that basically it's hard to make money at those prices uh, when you add the cost of rent and the cost of labor um, it is near impossible and the places like mako I mean, you're going to get what you pay for you're not going to get you know a really nice job some of them are better than others you know every one of those places has their franchises they're owned by different people some some of them are actually pretty good 
compared to others, more value, um, and it depends on their labor, the guys they have there, you know, they come and go, they get different guys, because they can't keep somebody at the rate of pay that they pay them. So keep that in mind if you're going for the cheap thing. You know, a shop that charges even $10,000, if you add up the space rent for every car that's in there, plus the labor cost, and you add up the material cost, it's really not very much profit. Uh, where companies make money on paint jobs is on you know, crash repair, you know, for insurance, because they get a decent amount of money for that, and they come and go very quickly. And, you know, so when they're only doing a door and a fender, and they say three hundred dollars or something like that to get to paint that, um, they do that, you know, six of those in one day. So then you're talking about where they start making decent amount of money. Or if they're doing your whole car, if you can imagine, let's say six spot repairs would be eighteen thousand dollars or eighteen hundred dollars. Um, you you know you could do that in a week. You know you could do ten times what you would do on one of these cars at ten thousand dollars. This might take you a month, a whole car for a shop to do it. it. Takes them a whole month of a guy working on it, and at least you know to do a whole complete paint job and to make it look really really nice and really really perfect it might even take longer than that or two or three months of a man hours uh, on, a, on a car so if you can imagine that does not divide up when you add up rent and you add up materials that does not divide up into a profitable business so that's when it's always a good idea for you to just take the initiative do it yourself there's a satisfaction to that you know when you do it yourself and it comes out as good as you can get it and you take it to a car show and you're proud of what you did there's nothing wrong with that and you might even be able to do a better job because you spent more time by doing it yourself so just something to think about I thought I'd make a video on this subject I know a lot of people are looking at paint jobs and going oh my gosh it costs so much money well it does and that's why because labor materials and it takes a lot of time to make something look nice. It takes a lot of time. And you can't expect that when you've got to pay rent and high wages. Especially if you're in states like California where the minimum wage is $15. And it's going that way a lot of places. You know, you're going to see paint jobs go to twenty grand real quick. Alright, so anyway, I'll talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.